Very good evening to you, viewers. How was your day? I hope you had a good Sunday thus far. I know perhaps the, some of you have just who had a nap and you're up. We appreciate you sharing with us. Of course, this is the Church of Nazarene Babylon District Family Forum, and we are happy to be with you. Um, this month will be two years that we were coming to your home, actually. Uh, initially, we started to have a three-month stint, and, and the three months have turned into three to two years. We thank you for your feedback, and um, we will continue to focus on topics related to the family life. Because as, as we have said in several occasions, our um, interest is trying to develop and build um, family life in Barbados. Because we want to stand that a strong family is really mean strong societies. Well, with me ag again today, I have my co-host, Sermon Kelman. A very blessed good afternoon to you. <laughs> How are you? Very reasonably okay. And good. Uh, looking forward to this wonderful time with our special guests. All right. And as you can see, we have our special guest, Reverend Grantley Martelli. And we are so glad to have him with us here today. Um, we will give you a little more about him a little later. Right? But um, he's there to share this. Right, Lee? Thank you. It's good to be here. Enjoy being here. Look forward to our time together this morning, this Ooh. afternoon. Yes, right. Yes, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> All right. Just want to say a brief pray as we begin. Father, we thank you again for this privilege of sharing on areas of interest relating to family life. We pray that as we share today, that you would guide us as we focus on the area of legacy, the significance of family, focusing on legacy as it relates to the family. We pray that you would guide us in this session, for Christ's sake. Amen. Okay, viewers, back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. Okay, back with you. Well, I just want to share with you um, a verse from the Bible as you do. We like to do that. Um, as, as I said to you, today we are focusing on the significance of family legacy, how important is that uh, for us to pay attention to. Um, I want to share with you a verse from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and uh, just one verse. Verse 9, it says, only, to, only be careful and wash yourselves closely so you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and to their children after them. Significant indeed. Mm -hmm. Well, as I said, we have to share with us today, uh, Reverend Grantley Martelli, um, he is the associate pastor at Hillside Church in Kent. And uh, of course, he served previously on Intermountain District Advisory Board and uh, Northwest Nazarene University Alumni Board. He also serves on the board of Mission Aviation Fellowship as a bivocational minister Reverend Martelli is also the Chief Operating Officer um, for Pierce Transit, a public transportation agency in Washington. Of course, something I'm sure he enjoys doing, Grant Lee is the founder and host of the Above the Noise, Faith, Race and Reconciliation podcast. And uh, he and his wife, Tamina, 
Tamina. Tamina. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Tamina. Right. Have been married for 35 years. Mm. And I know, I know more than anything else, he loves the Lord. So we are so glad to have him here with us today. And uh, I want to hand over to him at this time, really. And he's going to share with us, and then we will have a conversation. Yes, Thank you. Well, it's good to be here. Good to be back in Barbados. Good mm -hmm. to be back home, like we say, on the rock. And um, seeing friends and family. Um, I'm actually here uh, for this visit. We had our family reunion, the seventh family reunion that we've had. We have one every three years mm -hmm. uh, somewhere in the, in the world. And uh, this one, we decided to come back to Barbados where it started mm -hmm. um, in 2001. Um, we get together to honor and remember our, those who have gone before, specifically our mothers. And some of you may know her, Sister Madeline Leons, who was a member of Halls Road Church of the Nazarene for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to talk about legacy. So we honored her legacy. That's nice. And we're encouraging our young people and our f for brothers and sisters to remember that we have a legacy. And I want to talk to you today about that. There's a number of different places that the Bible talks about legacy, including Deuteronomy, where, um, <coughs> where Brother Farley read from. But I want to talk to you from 1 Timothy chapter 1, where Paul is talking to Timothy about legacy. Mm -hmm. We don't always read it that way because mm -hmm. sometimes as ministers, you know, they teach us theology that Timothy was a pastor and <coughs> Paul was teaching him how to be a pastor. But if you look at it, he's also talking to him about his legacy, right? right. Because of there's five points that I notice here. The first one is that he has a place to belong. We all need a place to belong. So Paul is telling him, you belong here in 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy. He called him a son. You're my son. You're a fellow worker. You're a companion, which means you have a place to belong. Mm -hmm. And legacy is always tied to a place and to people. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? What are you trying to remember? How, how, how were you brought up, the things that, do, that you were brought up to be, but also your present there, where, how do you connect? Mm -hmm. You connect in a family. Paul called him his son, and you, you know that Paul used Timothy in many ways as a son right. and, uh, and a fellow worker. Uh, he even called him at one time a bond servant, right? Mm -hmm. Bond servant means now you're no longer carrying letters back and forth, but you're now on the, on the road and you're getting the beatings and you're getting the criticism like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But even in all of that, you belong here. Mm -hmm. If you ever need a place to be, you know, you have me and you have the other brothers and sisters in the fellowship. The second thing that we see about Timothy that Paul says is you have a heritage, a godly heritage. He refers him back to his mother and his grandmother. Mm -hmm. He says, we remember your grandmother, um, your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. Mm -hmm. and, they, he, and he said, we remember their strong faith. So that means they were active, they were strong, mm -hmm. they taught him well, mm -hmm. they imparted to him, their faith was active. And now he says, you have that heritage. And he'll go on to say in the next point that I see it in you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he reminded them that first of all, you have a place to belong. Mm -hmm. Secondly, sec secondly, you have a place to look forward to. You have, a, you have that heritage to look back to, that grandmother, that mother who taught you. And we know that in the Jewish tradition, um, the father was supposed to teach the children the, the Torah but we also know that the mother spent more time with the children. Mm -hmm. So the father may come in and teach the Torah in the afternoon at the dinner table, but during the day, mm -hmm. the mother and the grandmother is actually teaching the children how to put that into practice, practice. right? So he learned a lot from his mother and grandmother as well as mm -hmm. from his dad. Mm -hmm. The third point we see is that you have a purpose in life. He said to fan into flame that which was placed in you, mm -hmm. right? You have a purpose, we see it in you, now we're encouraging you to do it. Now, how did Paul and the, and the team help him to do that? First of all, we know that Timothy was used to run messages back and forth between the different churches. You know, he probably carried Paul's bag or he probably, you know, he was along. You know, like when we were little kids and we wanted to follow the big people along, they'll give you like a purse or a bag or said, bring this, you know, you want to help around the house. And, and even though the Bible doesn't say all these in detail, we know in history, if you go back and look at the history of that time, that 
the, and the Bible does talk about this, that the, the older people are supposed to mentor the younger yes, people and bring right. them along, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was an oral society, so things were communicated orally and by doing, you know. Jesus learned to be a, a carpenter, a builder, a contractor from his father, right? Father probably the first one to put a hammer in his hand. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what happened to, to, to Timothy when he's saying, fan into flame that which has been called mm -hmm. with a laying on of hands. The laying on of hands didn't put the gift in Timothy. The laying on of hands just helped to pull it out <laughs> further, right? So now, the, the so you know, they say where there's smoke, there's fire. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, we want, you, you know, it's time for you to stop just smoking a little thing. We want to see some fire coming out of you. Yes. Because mm -hmm. the fourth point is because you have a purpose in life and you have a reputation to protect. God has called you to do something. He's put you in a place. We're going to help you get there. But now you're old enough that you need to start acting on that. You need to start maturing that. You need to start getting out there and doing what you're supposed to do so that we can help guide you and continue to bless, continue to bless you and to support you. Right? Protect what you have learned. And he said, entrust it to trustworthy people. And that is a good part of a legacy that his grandmother entrusted it to his mother who entrusted mm -hmm. it to him. And now Paul is saying, entrust it to godly men who can help you do the work. Right? Mm -hmm. So this, you see this legacy is building. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth thing is, is that we are all created uniquely. Psalm 139, verse 14 and 17, 14 to 16 says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So God has created each person for a unique purpose. And there is some things in life that nobody else can accomplish besides you. Mm -hmm. So we have some overlapping things. You may be in ministry together. We may know people together. But there's certain things that only I can do, only certain things that you can do, only certain things, because your, that sphere of influence is you, mm -hmm. right? So God uniquely made us to do that and to be there. And Paul was reminding him, Timothy, you are the one we are placed in here. Right? And if you go on further, you see Timothy is in this church and he's saying, you need to deal with the false teachings. You need not to be intimidated. In verse 14, it tells him, be bold in what you do. Don't let people put you down because that flame in you is put there by God. And even though you may be the youngest in many rooms, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that you're not called to do it. Right. So the final thing about legacy is whether we realize it or not, whether we accept it or not, and whether we're intentional about it or not, we're each building a legacy mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. a legacy of the summation of all the parts of our life, the good, the bad, and the ugly <laughs> that is left behind that people remember us for. Mm -hmm. And the thing that people remember us for, they remember if you leave some money, they remember if you leave a house or a car, but all those things are going <laughs> to fade away. Mm -hmm. But long after those things have faded away, they're going to remember who we were, the person we were, how we treated people, how we loved people, whether we were kind, whether we were gentle, mm -hmm. whether you were a person that people could come to for help, or whether they know that you're going to be the person that's spreading all everything to everybody. You hear this and you hear that, right? And, um, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I, I would like for my life is when I am dead, I, I've, I've heard some people pass away and I heard some people say, good riddance. And that comment is a comment of legacy. Mm -hmm. That means that that person had such a legacy that people were glad that they were no longer there. <laughs> and I don't want my life to be that. I want when I die that people remember, not necessarily miss me and, and, and put up walls and plaques to me, but that my life mattered in somebody else's life to help them to become a better person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Well, oh, that's 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 powerful. Yes, powerful mm -hmm. teaching there. Um, mm -hmm. uh, very, very practical teaching though, because yeah. mm -hmm. um, one of the things that was said is that whether or not you realize it, you're leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And um, and that's for good or for bad. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I think what what was said though by uh, by Martelli, mm -hmm. um, in terms of the whole issue of of entrusting that legacy. Um, to fearful men. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you want to talk about a little bit more though, because I, 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 I am thinking that you know, it, it sounds intentional. Um, it sounds as though, uh, as an individual, we have to be almost curators of our legacy, mm -hmm. and uh, and to ensure that they're not left a chance. They're left a chance, yes. right? Yeah. 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 So that's a really interesting point, right? Yes. Because part of this is. There are certain things about our legacy and our life that we control, 
That's right. And there are certain things that we don't control. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And many times we spend a lot of time on the things we don't control trying to change. Unfortunately. Them. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But if we, what if we focus intentionally on the things that we do yeah. control? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How you control, again, how you treat people, how we appear, mm -hmm. how we respond. Do we respond or do we react, you know? Mm -hmm. And the other thing about legacy is that we're not perfect. So legacy doesn't mean that everything about you is perfect. We're going to have our good times and our bad times, mm -hmm. good days and bad days, and coming to realize that as believers, as, as men and women, that sometimes our bad days, how we respond to those, say more about us than how we do our good days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So the intentionality then, you know, to pass it on is what can I control? Mm -hmm. What are the things that I can do? Can I impart something to somebody else? Can I help somebody else succeed better than me? Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we talk about at our family reunion, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes it's not always about me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I am put in a place to help you not just come alongside me, but help propel you ahead of me. Yeah, and it's, really, <laughs> it, it, it's almost like a network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the whole team mm -hmm. has a function. That like you said just now, each person is unique. Right. So, so if each person get to understand their role and their function, mm -hmm. then it makes the legacy richer. Makes the well, legacy right. richer. That's well, right. We're we, we gonna come back in a minute. <laughs> uh, it's a topic that we find very interesting as you have shown us quite clearly, right in the word, we have the inf information of legacy. So viewers, back with you in a moment. The Church of the Nazarene Family Forum, shaping our society for the future by enhancing our homes and securing our destiny. Come join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. on CBC TV 8 as we turn the spotlight on an aspect of family life of critical importance to us. Tune in and be blessed. So, welcome back to you. Um, we're having a very, a very further conversation here uh, with Bradley in terms of the whole idea of legacy. And one of the things that really impacted on me um, is the whole issue of personal growth. And uh, personal growth is not just for, for us, for the individual alone, it's for the entire group. Yeah. Because the people around us. Yes, yeah. because, because we are a part of a system. Mm -hmm. And we are part of that system, you know, and therefore, when we grow and, and change and become the best version of, our, of ourselves, um, then we are system in a more positive way. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and so our, person, our personal growth then has significant um, impact mm -hmm. on, the, uh, on those around us. I mean, like step with you. Mm -hmm. It does. You know, our per when we grow, when we become better, mm -hmm. we surround ourselves with people who help us become better. Mm -hmm. You know, part of our personal growth is realizing that there have been other people who poured into our lives to make us who we are, to make mm -hmm. us better, right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying to now pay that forward, entrust it to trustworthy people. Mm -hmm. And that, that trustworthy, that, I mean, we could do a whole section on that, right? Because to find a trustworthy person, you've got to begin to know their character. You've mm -hmm. got to begin to know who they are, right? That's why Paul could write all these things about Timothy. They had spent so much time together yeah, that he was mm -hmm. talking about character. Mm -hmm. He was a person of integrity. So how do you help, how do you find those people and then entrust it into them? What I've learned in my life is that sometimes you find those people because they find themselves. Mm -hmm. They come and they're attached to you, they show you themselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes some of the people we think are gonna be the greatest at something or not, and the one we think are gonna be the least are the one who really catch on to it. Mm -hmm. And that's the one we end up pouring ourselves into, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but the other, the, the other thing I was, I was focusing on before the break was that coming to the point in life where we are, where we are comfortable and at peace to watching somebody we help go farther than we were. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, right. which, which means that we have to mm -hmm. have, you know, perception, and it cannot be a competition. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, the whole idea of wanting the person to be propelled mm -hmm. further than you are means that you can't have that sense of competition. Right. Yeah. Unless you're talking about healthy competition. Healthy competition, you know. <laughs> I suppose there's room for that as well. Right. But, which, but which the whole what, idea of jealousy. Yeah, yeah, which is what Timothy Paul was telling yes. Timothy, right? He's mm -hmm. he's trying to propel him ahead yes. of him. Yes. You know? But I'm talking about jealousy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jealousy yeah. is the jealousy, negative part. Yeah. It can undermine yeah. the legacy, if you want right. to say that. Yeah. But but I also see you have to have a little perspective as well. Yeah. Uh, where we're we going. Right. Where you want to get. 
because you know in our Western construct we're very individualistic. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and so we think about, about, about ourselves, our beginning, our end, what we accomplish. Mm -hmm. But I think what what um, we're sharing about this this uh, this afternoon is we're seeing things more in terms of a more a more family a composite kind of and a family a family context. Yeah, yes. you know, not just me. Right, we're, we're the we every generation. <laughs> we should we should get better. We should become stronger. Yeah, uh, we mm -hmm. should be more influential. Uh, we should we should connect better people generally. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a more it's, it's much, a much broader perspective. Broader perspective, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. that we need to become comfortable yes, with, right? Yeah, Especially yeah. as believers, mm -hmm. yes. we should be become comfortable with seeing other people. Do propelling well. our faith, yes, propelling right. their faith, yeah. stronger, and maybe even learn from them. Maybe that yeah. person that you led to Christ may be a person who can help you through a struggle mm -hmm. because right. God has gifted them with something mm -hmm. that we don't have. Yeah. You know, but that's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. It's not easy to to see people move ahead of us. Mm -hmm. It's not always easy. Yeah. Because we, we're taught to work hard mm -hmm. to, and we would always be ahead, especially if you're older. That's right. But think about the beauty of um, you know, we were talking before this, you know, you're seeing your children go farther than you even went. Mm -hmm. yes, I find yeah. joy in that to see my children yes. doing things that I mm -hmm. only imagine. Mm -hmm. And some of them that I couldn't even imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and see them doing that. And I'm like, wow, they're so far ahead of me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's. Yeah. <laughs> and it means also that one of the things that we have to do more of is to be celebrate. Celebrate. Yes. Celebrate what happens in a family, you know, it doesn't matter how small it may be. Uh, a child completes university, you celebrate it. Yeah. They get a new job, you celebrate. Yeah. Um, and of course, so that becomes a culture of celebration. If something happens, right. you, you empathize. And um, because it's not only the good things that you zero in on, the things that are may, may, may happen that are negative, right. you want to empathize and see, well, how can I help to make things better? Right. You walk beside you walk them beside through them. those lower times, right, right. knowing that within them, like Paul said, there's a flame, there's a there's a, a spark in there yeah. that's going to burst mm -hmm. into a flame. Mm -hmm. And maybe this trial is the flame, is the mm -hmm. catalyst that's yeah. going to cause that thing to burst into a mm -hmm. flame. And that person is going to come out of that much stronger than they went in. But we also, we walk with them. We don't just send them on and say, yeah. I got your back and leave them. Mm -hmm. We walk with them through it. So yes. if they need a hand for a little bit of time, mm -hmm. we pull them along. Yeah. But then you get to the point to where you fling them ahead. I say, all right, you just come through that. Keep yeah. going, buddy. It makes the journey <laughs> more uh, practical, real, yeah. you know? But, but I, mean, I, I want to, to, to be a, an advocate, not the devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. It's an advocate. Okay. And I want to ask the question, though. Um, is there is there something that has to be broken in our in our in our generations to facilitate that kind of thinking? What is what I mean by that? I, I, I find that that oftentimes that they they see a lot of infighting mm -hmm. in families. Um, and it's generational as well. It seems mm -hmm. as though you know, persons don't talk to each other, mm -hmm. they're envious of one another. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's a, a general sense of pull down, tear down. Mm -hmm. and, and I was wondering though, if maybe there's a spiritual dimension in this whole idea of legacy that has to be corrected, mm -hmm. broken, so that we as prepared, um, prepared <laughs> mm -hmm. so we as families can, yeah. can begin the, the process that you talked about. Because I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the wonderful benefits. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing, I'm seeing things like, like families giving scholarships to families. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm seeing families educating families. You mm -hmm. know, um, because it's not just about me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm my own family. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a cousin who done extremely well. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, she has a chance to become a. A newer surgeon, you mm -hmm. know, um, and uh, as a family, I mean, as as a, as a how do I help that? Right, right. I mean, I, we know our parents can't do that, mm -hmm. but collectively, mm -hmm. can we help them? So yeah. what about what about? I mean, without seeing context, what about family and sharing finances? Right, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know? yeah. You See, know? So that's that's part of the le whole legacy. Empowering the whole. Group. But I think what needs to be broken. I mean, if you want to talk spiritually, deeply, spiritual, <laughs> theological, right? 
that spirit of selfishness, yes. right? The Bible yes. talks about selfishness yeah. and needs to be broken by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to realize that there is enough in the world to go around for all of us. Yeah. The fact that you succeed mm -hmm. or that your your cousin become a neurosurgeon doesn't mean that you're less. Yeah. Doesn't mean that what you're doing mm -hmm. doesn't matter as much, right? Mm -hmm. So can you can you let go of that and not be so competitive, realizing that when one person in our family succeeds, the whole family succeeds. Yeah, it also means right. we have to value the different gifting. Different gifting, right? You know, we're here, here in the in our context, in our Caribbean culture, we put a lot of, a lot of emphasis on the academics. The academic, that's right. I might have somebody in your family who is a, a wonderful artisan. So he see himself as important right. as my other brother who is a professor. Right. Sometimes we have we 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 older ones have to really lead the charge because sometimes you celebrate the professor, mm -hmm. we don't celebrate the artisan. You see, and yes, yeah, so that's the <laughs> thing that we also talked about too, is, mm. you know, we, we just had the first person in our family get their PhD, yeah. and she's now yeah. a clinical psychologist. Right. But you know, the fact of the matter is if you look around us, the mechanic is just as important as a clinical psychologist, yes. the yes. plumber, yes. right? Yes. The person who sells your groceries, the person mm -hmm. who cleans your house. I remember telling some people at work one day, I used to, I have the habit of talking to everybody, no matter where they are. Mm -hmm. I'd say hi to the janitor all the way up to the CEO. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends pulled me together and says, why do you always talk to the janitor when you come in? You know, you're a man. I said, well, she's a human being and she has grandkids. And she's part of the team. And I said to him, you know, if she don't do her work, every one of us in here, we going home, yeah. are yeah. we going to the hospital, right? Yeah. yeah. So you cannot devalue her just because she's not a manager or she doesn't mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. a degree. She's a human being, yes. right? But the other thing that needs to be broken is this competition. And mm -hmm. I find a lot of things that sometimes in family, we have these expectations, right? Yeah. Mommy is going to die that, and I'm going to inherit this, and I'm going to inherit that, and they're yeah. going to give me this, and they're going to yeah. give me that. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to getting all this stuff. Yeah. Physical right? focus. Physical yeah, focus. Yeah, yeah. And then you're going to get in my way because mm -hmm. now I got to split that with you, right? Yeah, yeah. But daddy always told me I was going to get the house. You yeah. got five brothers, mm -hmm. but you're walking around saying, I'm going to get the house. Yeah. But yeah. What are your other four brothers going to supposed yeah, yeah. to do, right? You know, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> going to interject here because we have to two minutes to go. Okay. Well, you know what I, I think? I think we're going to have to continue this in the next program, okay. right? Because there's so much we need to unpack. Um, I guess give you one minute to give a final comment in this segment. Well, I mean, I'd say, you know, the, 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 the issue of legacy is really important. All of these things are important. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of being intentional about legacy that I have learned and that our family is learning is that it creates a place to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You bring it on the table and people begin to talk about it. And mm -hmm. some of those things literally come out and say, yeah. well, I th always thought you were, yeah. or I always thought this, mm -hmm. or I always thought mommy, you know, mm -hmm. or you got a college degree and everybody thought you were better than me. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're intentional and we lay it out on the table yeah. sometimes brings people forward to yes. begin to say it. Right. Some of the things you were talking about mm -hmm. says, Let's converse about this because for 15 years I've been feeling this. Yes. Get a chance to, yeah. to share. Well, I, I really think we're going to continue this in the next program. I uh, want to thank you. Thank you for having uh, me here. Grant Lee for sharing with us. And as I said, we're going to have with the next program as well. Uh, I want to thank you for sharing on this important topic. Thank Reverend Kelman, a final prayer as we close. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this relating discussion. This afternoon lord we pray father even now as you will continue that you oh god will give direction father this is revolutionary thinking lord and a change that is so that is so necessary for our families and for our society so we can bond and um, build bridges across generations lord we give you thanks today for our special guest Reverend martelli we pray father for your continued direction in his life in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you once again, Reverend Martali, for sharing with us. And uh, viewers, we'll be back with you next program. We're going to zero in on this very topic. God bless you.